What we're starting to do uh, with this percent composition by mass is we're going to start a mm, moving toward being able to come up with a chemical formula. And it'll take us a, a little bit to do that because there's a few pieces to it. But how do I get a chemical formula? I know what a chemical formula is. I know what it means. How do I get it? Because I can't look at atoms, so it's not like I can see the chemical f chemicals involved. But one of the things that I'm going to remind myself about, and remind you as well, I suppose, is that a chemical formula is the ratio of numbers of atoms in a compound. And we don't need to get into the non-metal, non-metal versus uh, metal, non-metal differences, do I reduce or not, but the formula is that, l that ratio of atoms. So for example, these ones. But we cannot count individual atoms. So it's great for us to know that water is H2O, but how do we know that? And we can't even count moles. So if you're thinking, well, I've got this moles because moles is the thing that allows me to uh, count groups of atoms because I can't count atoms. The problem is I can't count moles. How do I know if I have a mole? Well, I could use the molar mass. Getting there, and we're gonna, going to be using that. So I'm going to you don't need to write this down. If you're writing the previous stuff down, that's awesome. But what I want you to do is I want you to remind yourself what a percent is. And the most common thing we do with percents is figure out tests. So if you got a 36 out of a 44, then you take the top number, you divide it by the bottom number, and you get your calculator says 0 0.082. And then the next step you always do in your head when you're doing a, a test, what you actually do in your head is, is you move the decimal place two points because you have in your mind multiplied by 100. So you got 36 out of 44, which is 82 percent. Pretty good job. But a percent is always a ratio out of 100, so something out of 100. If instead of the test being out of 44, if it was out of 100 and you did exactly the same goodness on it, uh, you did exactly the same level of, of expertise, then you would have gotten 82 out of 100, which would be equivalent to 36 out of 44. So this is another way I can express it. The reason why I think that's an important place to start is because as we start dealing with percents for atoms and molecules and things like that, we're going to lose the familiarity that we have with tests percents. So we need to remind ourselves about that. Okay, what if it's not a test? Well, what if I had a bag of jelly beans that had 16 grams of red jelly beans, 28 grams of orange, and 12 grams of green jelly beans, and I asked you to calculate the percent composition by mass. Now, I know what you're thinking, that is way too many green jelly beans, and I think you're right. But it doesn't really matter for the purposes of this because we don't have to eat the green jelly beans. Just throw them away. But we would need the total amount of mass because in the same way that you take what you got on the test divided by what the test was out of the total, we need the total amount of stuff, jelly beans, mass. So I add them all up. And then, if I want the mass, uh, the percent of orange, and red would be the same, and green, well, we just throw those away anyhow, so it doesn't matter. But the percent composition of those jelly beans that are orange, or the percent that are orange, I should say, is the amount that are orange, mass of the orange, divided by the amount or the mass of the total. So in the case of the jelly beans, it would be the 28 grams of orange jelly beans over the 56 grams in total, multiplied by 100. I'm not going to worry about the answer because we don't care about jelly beans, we just want to familiarize ourselves with that. Okay, bring it back to chemistry. This is where the stuff starts to look like what you're going to be doing with it. If you knew the masses of elements that were involved in making a compound, so in this case 3.45 grams of sodium, 5.33 grams of chlorine, they get together and make a compound. How does, what is that percent composition by mass? I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I do on a test. The amount that I have divided by the total amount. Same thing I did with the jelly beans. The amount that I'm interested in divided by the total amount. So I need the total mass. So if I want to do the mass of sodium and a uh, percent of, of chlorine would be a similar process, I would need the mass of sodium divided by the total mass, multiply that by 100, where in this case the percent of sodium then is 3.45 grams divided by 8.78 grams times 100 to get 39.3 percent. Now, I could, I'm not going to, I could do chlorine, I would do it a very similar way, but here's where I want to pause for a moment. That 
if you think about this in terms of chemical formulas, you've only seen one chemical formula involving sodium and chlorine, and 3.9.3 .3 was not in there. So while we might be moving along the road to get to chemical formulas, we need more. Okay, what if I know the chemical formula? What if I happen to be given this formula that is ZnSO4? So that means I've got one atom of zinc, one atom of sulfur, four atoms of oxygen in my formula unit, in my thing that represents the chemical compound. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that I have exactly one mole of that. And then I can do this, mass of zinc divided by the mass of total times 100 would give me my percent of zinc. Well, how do I know the mass of zinc? Well, if I had one mole, I would have a molar mass worth. So I would take the mass of zinc, the mass of sulfur, the mass of oxygen, there are four of those, and I would add all of those up to give me my total mass. Then the percent of zinc is the mass of zinc, again, one molar mass worth of that, well, I had one zinc in that, so that divided by the total mass times 100 to give me uh, just under 40%. And we don't need to worry too much about the rounding rules. We can talk about that another time. Uh, I like it to be uh, to carry a decimal place or two just so that what you see in your calculator, because hopefully you're going to try this on your own, is what you see on the screen. Okay, that's really all there is to it. I mean, we can make it a bit more complicated, but not really. What we're going to mostly do with percent composition is use that to jump into coming up with a more recognizable chemical formula. And we're going to do this using a lab where we're going to be need getting those masses, and then we're going to be comparing an um, experimental percent composition with a theoretical. So we're going to use both of those procedures or calculations. Anyway, that'll be a thing we do in class. See you then.